You know what's an interesting product? Tablets. It's a weird product category where the entire industry really wanted them to succeed and, well, they did for a while, but after they just kind of fell flat. I mean, what other tablets can you name besides an iPad or a Surface? But why is that? What were their sales numbers like and what led to many tech companies' tablets losing steam? Is there any future for them? We'll have answers to all those questions here at Techonomics. Hey, it's Carlos, always trying to provide you with insight on technology and how it's affecting you and the world at large. What I really find interesting about tablets is how they were always seen as their own product category, but over time, they transformed into being laptop replacements. But let's get some context to really understand why that is. Hopefully to no one's surprise, the iPad was in fact not the first tablet to come out to market. It was the Linus Wright Top that came out in 1987, though it wasn't much of a computer, it was just a virtual sketch pad that you can write notes on. Then the grid pad came out two years later, and though it was mostly used as a notepad as well, it ran MS-DOS, so it actually had some computing functionality, though it was mostly ignored by customers. After that, you had Apple's first tablet, the message pad, that was released in 1993. It was an attempt to create the Personal Digital Assistant, or PDA. Unfortunately, it didn't really land. In 1997, the Palm Pilot came out that did basically the same thing. Then, Microsoft got into the space, first in 2000 with a prototype coining the term Tablet PC for the first time. Next, they made Windows XP run on a tablet made by Fujitsu that didn't really sell very well. And after that, Lenovo made a tablet version of their ThinkPad that ran Windows, though it cost an excruciating $2,100. That's all to say that there were plenty of tablets that came out before the iPad. They just never landed, were cost prohibitive, or didn't offer the features that customers were looking for. Modern tablets can basically be divided into three categories, which have interestingly enough grabbed the market in completely different ways. You have the iPad, Android tablets, and the Surface. The iPad came out in 2010 and was basically the first of its kind. Yes, tablets did come before it, but this had a specialized operating system that offered functionality that users actually wanted. Add on top of that, Apple's App Store, which provided developers with a means by which to distribute their applications that were specialized for tablet use directly to consumers, and the sky's the limit. It was a perfect storm because frankly, at the time, there were no real competitors. And that can be seen in the fact that the first iPad was outselling Macs on a quarterly basis. That, alongside Apple's great reputation, led to third-party support for a variety of new products like lights, door locks, speakers, thermostats, and many more. And the desire for supporting these sorts of products only multiplied with the release of the iPad mini in 2012. And with it, the iPad could no longer be considered a product just for personal use. It also provided utility like being a one-stop shop for your house's appliances and services. But the utility didn't end there because Apple released the iPad Pro in 2015 aimed for professional use and alongside it, the Apple Pencil. Now, a wide array of professional users had exactly what they needed in the iPad, which was a stylus that functioned exactly how they wanted and superior hardware. And as always, developers were more than happy to provide specialized hardware to go with it. Now, in 2021, Apple has put their M1 chip in their iPad Pro, giving it desktop level performance. They see the iPad as a computer replacement, and in many ways, it is. But more than anything, now the iPad has such a wide array of different uses depending on the line that you want to purchase. It can be an entertainment system, remote control, computer, professional device, or maybe even all-in-one. And now I wonder what's going to come next. So the next big tablet category is Android tablets, and the best way to describe them was that they were trying to provide a cheaper alternative for the iPad. Unfortunately, they just weren't that good. And all the major manufacturers tried to make a tablet. Google, Samsung, Sony, Motorola, and many more. As a result, the hype for Android tablets really died down after a couple of years. And you could even see it in the iPad numbers after the mid-2010s as their sales just started to kind of stagnate. But unlike the Android tablets, iPads could still sell in massive quantities. Which is really unfortunate because after 2015, high-end Android tablets actually started to get good with the likes of the Pixel C and more modern versions of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S line. And they, just like the iPad, tried to become a computer replacement. Unfortunately, it just didn't really land for them. And the last category, and arguably the most transformative one for tablets, was Microsoft Surface. 
The Surface, which was released in 2012, was a tablet really in name only because it was built to be a laptop with the utility of a tablet. And in doing that, it really does fulfill its goal. It runs a full version of Windows, you can buy a keyboard case for it, and even a pen if you need that functionality as well. Then in 2015, Microsoft released the Surface Book, which had the same utility as the Surface, but with a more laptop-like chassis. And it even offered better graphical performance that, frankly, many users needed. That said, the Surface hasn't changed very much over the past decade, but nonetheless, their sales numbers have increased year over year. And it's easy to see why. The Surface offers something that many users wanted, a tablet with laptop level performance and functionality without compromises. So with this in mind, what's the future of tablets? Well, Android tablets have all but died at this point, and the Surface and the iPad each control their own respective markets that are completely independent from each other. The Surface for productivity and business users, and the iPad for more leisure and artistic work. And going forward, it seems like both are focused on keeping control of each of their respective markets. But there is one new place where tablets may be transforming the industry in the near future. Foldable phones. Both Samsung and Huawei have each come out with foldable phones that could unfold to become tablets. It brings all the benefits and utility of an Android tablet, but in a package that can fit in your pocket. And best of all, it's a premium product, so you don't have to worry about some half-baked features or some subpar hardware. You get the absolute best the manufacturer has to offer, but with a price tag to match. Tablets have revolutionized computing, and I love the history because it shows the benefit of trying again and again until you get a product that you're totally satisfied with. And not only that, now we have such a wide variety of different tablets that have such distinct functionality that anyone can purchase a tablet that meets their exact needs. But more than anything, I really appreciate how much innovation tablets have brought in how people interact with their computing devices. Now we touch, use a stylus, or even have a removable keyboard. They are all different forms of input that allow people to use their devices how best works for them. And giving customers more options is never a bad thing. Okay guys, thanks for watching another video. Please comment down below with whatever your favorite tablet is and what manufacturer you think might bring in the next big innovation in tablet technology. Also, please hit that like button, it really does help. As always, this is Carlos from Technomics. over and out.